So be honest, how long do you wear your jeans for before washing them? And should you wash them every week, every month? What about t-shirts? Should we just use the old classic smell test to determine when we should chuck them in the washing machine? Things were so much easier when I was little. I knew my clothes needed washing because my parents washed them. Simple. But I'm now, apparently, a grown man and I need to do my own laundry. And that sucks. So it's time to turn to science to see how often I should wash my clothes. So, why do we get dirty? Stop your sniggering. Some reasons are obvious. If you've been running around a football pitch or tucking into spaghetti in your favourite white t-shirt, you don't need me telling you where you got those stains. But other dirt comes from a much nastier source, you. Yep, humans are disgusting. We're constantly shedding skin cells, oozing skin oils and secreting sweat into everything we're wearing. In fact, a human sheds around 500 million skin cells and a litre of sweat every day nice. On their own, those things don't actually smell too bad. Although it's certainly not attractive seeing dark pits when you look in the mirror. But on its own, sweat has no smell. The problem starts when the bacteria living on your skin get involved. They live by feasting on your sweat and skin cells, breaking down the proteins in those into smelly byproducts. For example, Staphylococcus epidermis bacteria living on your skin breaks amino acids in your sweat down into stinky isovaleric acid. That's the same acid that also pops up in strong cheese and in badly made beer, which might explain why your uncle's homebrew may smell a tad sweaty. But it's apocrine sweat that really makes you stinky. Apocrine sweat glands are found in the genital area, breasts, armpits, and randomly, your eyelids. They mature at puberty and make a fatty sort of sweat. And when that's broken down by bacteria, it really honks. Now, it's not just the bacteria's smelly byproducts that we should be probably washing off our clothes. There are also bacteria and other nasties living on them that spread infections. In 2006, an outbreak of MRSA in an American college football team was traced back partly to the team's habit of sharing towels. So how will washing make your clothes clean? Modern laundry detergents are a mixture of various chemical cleaning tricks, from biological enzymes that digest away stains, to optical brightness that absorb UV and reflect back blue light, making your whites look whiter. But at the heart of any detergent is the power of surfactants. Surfactants make stains soluble in water. A surfactant molecule essentially has two ends, a hydrophilic, water-loving part and a hydrophobic part which would rather bind to fats. The hydrophobic end wants to be anywhere else but in the water, so it sticks out into the air. When you wash your mucky t-shirt in detergent, the surfactant's hydrophobic part binds to the dirt and grease on your top. Then the hydrophilic part binds to the water and pulls all that grime away from your now clean t-shirt. Okay, so moment of truth. We know why our clothes get dirty and how washing them gets rid of that. So, when should you be washing your clothes? Obvious ones first, if you don't want to smell, then the clothes that lie closest to your stinkiest glands, t-shirts, underwear, vests, should be washed regularly. Your socks too. The dark, moist environment in your shoes is a great place for bacteria, allowing them to break your sweat down and make it stinky. Just employ the smell test with this one. Although you'll find it's pretty much after wearing them for just about a day. What about towels? Surely you're clean when you use them. Well, remember that poor football team? Your towels pick up an awful lot of skin flakes and bacteria. Also, the NHS advises that damp items are the perfect place for germs to reproduce and towels sure get damp. People with doctorates in things like environmental science actually advise washing towels only after three uses. And to all the lazy people out there, don't leave them lying around damp in the laundry basket afterwards. And that's not the only thing you should probably be washing more regularly than you do. One professor at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine recommended washing your PJs after a week's wear due to the risk of infection from bacteria shed from your skin. Ugh. Stuff that's further from your sweat can last longer. So, how often do you wash your jeans and how often should you wash them? Well, not as often as you'd think. 
If you've bought raw, untreated denim, a lot of manufacturers recommend waiting as long as you possibly can before washing them. Instead of washing, they say to use a damp cloth or to freeze them or to walk out into the ocean. Sounds sensible. The CEO of Levi's once had a pair on for a year without washing them. So what's that all about? The aim is to keep the fabric stiff, dark, indigo, and with a distinctive personal pattern of fading. Truly raw denim is even unsanforized. The fibers aren't pre-treated and they'll probably shrink the first time you get them wet. Many people advise waiting at least six months before washing your jeans. But this is style over cleanliness, so it does depend what matters to you more. Oh, and FYI people, we're talking about baggy Wild West style jeans here. If you're into those skinny ones, then do us all a favor, consider all the places that those jeans are cupping. They may need uh, washing a little bit more regularly. So to finish up, maybe you don't want your jeans to actually be too unique. In 1997, the FBI were able to convict a bank robber based, in part, on the fade patterns on his jeans. That, or you may have just freaked out. Either way, don't worry, it's the same for all of us. The only living part of the hair is the follicle, 